rulers and guidelines will become even more important in Illustrator than they ever were in Photoshop, just because the nature of um, designing logos and um, other graphical pieces like this, you need things to align. So in order to use guidelines, you first need to show your rulers. So go to View, Rulers, Show Rulers. If your rulers come up looking strange, as if they are in strange um, moments and numbers, it might be because you are in points, or it might be because you are in millimeters. If you right click on the ruler bar, you can change it to inches and tell it that you live in America and you would like inches instead of other uh, moments. Once you have the rulers up, you can create any guidelines that you want by starting in the ruler, clicking once, dragging over, and letting go where you when you are at where you want to be. Okay, so this blue line here is a guideline. I can make horizontal guidelines by starting in the top ruler and dragging down. I can make as many of these as I like. Click and drag. And you're going to use guidelines anytime you need to align things. So if I need to make an intersection, I want to make sure things are aligning vertically. Whatever your needs are. Generally speaking guides start off locked okay so you can unlock them which means that i can now come in and move this okay but most of the time you're going to want them to stay locked so that they don't end up moving and notice they do each get their own notation over here on the layer palette so i can delete them over here if i like if decided that one was not in the right spot um, and i can hide all of them so under guides you can hide but notice this has a keyboard shortcut Control and the semicolon, which is not necessary to know, but it's not a bad one. Oh, sorry, that was the wrong one. That was grid. So control and semicolon will toggle your guidelines on and off. Because sometimes once you are nearly done designing, you want to hide them so you can see what's going on. The next thing you need to understand is artboard. So if I zoom out, okay, so here's my piece of paper. It's eight and a half by 11. That's the document that I've built. If I continue to zoom out though, as little as I possibly can make, you see this dark gray square, okay? I have, it's 224 inches by 224 inches. There's my piece of paper in the middle. This is like working on a ginormous desk. You can place things wherever you want, okay? I can put objects anywhere, okay? But if I put them over here, I'm very likely to lose or forget where they are. So my suggestion to you is that you start near your paper, perhaps use the space around here, and then move things onto your paper when you're ready. It is like having a giant desk that you can um, scratch and work and doodle on and then put your final thoughts here. It's important to understand that only what is inside the white box will print. So if I have a shape, that is filled over here, only this portion that's inside the white box will print. This part over here will not. So that can be an interesting and good thing to know, especially when you're designing. Sometimes rather than cutting things off yourself and making the shape cut, sometimes you just drag things off the edge of the page. Um, that's a more efficient way to cut and, and end your images.